These teams have endured a brutal travel week. They've had delay upon delay. But we're here on a frozen rocky top, ready to go. And it is Passat, ironically, the only player to ever transfer from Tennessee to Vanderbilt who touched it first in this game. Vanderbilt obviously in the gray uniforms, the Lady Vols in their home whites. Tennessee packing it in on this opening possession. Moore dishes it inside. This is Oliver. And Oliver scoops it back out to Passat, but check the shot clock. And the first bucket of the game with a big smile on her face is Justine Passat. Passat actually got a few boos in the introduction, so I think that's why the smile was on her face. The Lady Vols starting five, all averaging double figures this year. And Stripling throwing it out of Powell's reach for the first turnover of the game. Well, it's going to be a good matchup tonight. I like both of these teams, especially when you look at the guard situation. When you look at their post situation on both sides, two different post games. I think it's good, too, Tamika, but they're both playing well. I think both these teams are very happy with where they are at this point in the season. Well, one of the things when you watch Vanderbilt play, they have the personality of their coach, Shea Ralph. She wants to punch first. Lady Vols have struggled early on in the game, especially starting games, so see what they can do. The three answered by Jewel Spear. And so both buckets made so far have been three-pointers for each team. Well, it's interesting. I just looked at the back of the uniforms, and every single Lady Ball player right now is wearing Summit on the back of their jerseys. And instead of their uh, names, they have Summit back there. Again, uh, this is the We Backpack game on this Sunday for Tennessee. This year. Do you believe in the announcer's jinx? I do. Okay. She's made <laughs> 25 straight free throws. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> great pass. And it is Stripling, the beneficiary of that great pass. And uh, Tennessee takes the one-point lead. I cannot believe she yeah. missed that free throw. I told you. I do believe in the jinx, but let's make a note. All five starting five for Tennessee average in double digits, so trying to find different ways to score. Passat not able to connect. Passat hit her first shot. She's missed her last two. Jackson leading the break. Look at Rakia with the ball handling skills. Coast to coast for Rakia Jackson. And that is so hard to guard. Jordan Camber is number three, a player to watch as well. Leading the team in scoring, but finding ways to figure it out. It's a one-two punch for the Vanderbilt offense. Yeah, Moore has been lighting it up in SEC play, averaging 21 points a game. Jackson got loose. And Rakia Jackson, he played 28 minutes against Mississippi State. She'll be in the game a little bit later for the Lady Vols, and we'll give them a much different look. Powell up against Passat and one. And Powell will be on the free throw line now, 75% free throw shooter. Some quick play, but I'm in the mix of that, a couple of unforced errors. Vanderbilt needs a basket. They've turned it over their last two possessions. Moore trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Wynn and knocks down the jumper. Do that earlier in the quarter. Rakia short on the jumper, and now it's Vanderbilt on the break. Oh, this is the game Bandy wants to see. They want to go up and down. And Moore playing on the top and go down a little bit. Wynn lost it, got it back. A lot of contact, no whistle. And Moore picks it up. Vanderbilt can tie or take the lead. Tennessee was up 12-6. And puck it. All of a sudden, you already elevate your team by bringing one of those transfers in. He's been averaging 21 points a game in SEC play. Working on another free throw streak. Spear looking for someone to get rid of it to Darby. Well, they got to get the ball down low in the paint. And you see Key fighting down low with Tia Jackson. Slipped in there. Washington with the offensive rebound miss. And there's the benefit of being 6 6. He didn't even have to jump for that rebound. Key open. They get it to her. And I. Pierre. Nice. Camille Pierre from Arizona. And with so much poise, I think that's the thing that you've seen in the SEC conference play. 
is in the beginning of the season, of course, she's learning the system, and that's one thing that Coach Ralph talked about, learning the system. She really had to be out of Rakia Jackson. Holling shed 53 for Tennessee. He's just coming to the game, replacing Spear. Three-pointer off the mark. And a good hustle by Washington. That's why she's so dangerous. Incredible speed for a post player. Three is open. Cambridge knocks it down within one. Cambridge right now leading the team and scoring 14 points per game, and that's her first bucket of the game, one for four right now. But she going to keep, she has to keep shooting. Cambridge, uh, such an inspiring story. There's key again. Tennessee in the midst of playing three teams with top 60 net ratings. They beat Mississippi State Thursday. Shot clock is at four, game clock about two seconds beyond that. 50% from three-point land in SEC play. Kyle Wynn, as the clock expires, launches, got a good look. I think it's because Pat really wanted that. She needed it, and she wanted it. So um, those are the things that they're doing really exceptionally well. I think the thing that makes it unique for me is the fact that so much focus is spent on the caregiver in Alzheimer's, not just the patients with Alzheimer's. Oh, absolutely, and it's so important. It just, um, we, we, we're trying to find a cure, but in the meantime, we've got to have those people that, that help along their journey. Well, it's interesting, too, Holly, you were here when it first started. So the beginning stages, obviously, with, with Coach Summit, but even the foundation. Yeah. What has that process been like? Well, you know, it, it, it uh, I look back and I just remember her saying, you know, she didn't want to give up coaching, but she had to, but she needed to find something else to rally around. Because, you know, she's not staying still. Nope. She's got to keep moving, and she thought that's a great way for her to, uh, to stay involved and make a difference. And how fun is it to... To everybody wearing purple to, uh, you know, I came in and I said, oh, they got something on the back of their shirt. You think about Vanderbilt in the last couple of years and no disrespect to the, to the coaches, but it's struggled at times. And and I think Shay's really taken time to build a really. And this is a picture of Pat and that little Tyler Summit along with Marsha Lake, which is Shay Ralph's mother. And shade. Yeah, and it, it's about the caretakers and, and trying to educate them. And uh, and I think it's so important because caretakers are, it's hard. You know, it, it, it's hard to see someone struggle with all. So this is a, a massive game for both teams. And I think it's still early in the, in the SEC conference play, right? I mean, obviously you want to stay in second, but every single night you go out, tough and you've got to win in front of this big crowd and uh, it's hard to win on the road LSU at uh, Auburn and so it, it's just it's difficult this Vanderbilt team's been the big pleasant surprise in the SEC this year shot clock under 10 Pierre nice. knocks it down Not gonna give her four points on the night but I love just how smooth she's playing She's only a freshman, y'all, so we got some years to watch her as she continues to grow. Still learning the system, still you know, learning how to play in this league at this level. Well, Powell, right place at the right time. Now she'll defend Washington. Shot clock under 10. Cambridge got loose. Cambridge trying to sneak it over to her. I think she stepped out of bounds and now she will not seek a professional career and it's been her best so far. It has. Look at these numbers right here. You just see and obviously last year she sat out with an injury, really able to work on her game, figure out different things she needed to do, picked up a three-point shooting, all of that, and done a great job. And from Poland, her sister played at UConn while Shea Ralph was coaching there. Another sister played at Utah. A member of the Poland national team so continue to dominate the wave. Oh, Sasha Washington, post player, but she's an undersized post, so able to do some switching, able to play inside, outside, within the arc. She does a great job. Puckett ends a scoring drought that was just over two and a half minutes long. Tennessee has maintained the lead with Vanderbilt always within striking distance and a foul. Washington will be on the line for two free throws. What does she do so well? Post players that are going up against her are bigger. So she's two point game as we get ready to end the half. 
Winner stays in second place in the SEC. And a jump ball. And you, you don't have the luxury of driving that far into the paint and passing it out. You have to have somewhere to go. And as Shea Ralph says this team, she has the most weapons she's ever had in her short time at Vanderbilt. Washington, there's that speed. Tennessee trying to find ways to score. Latia Jackson moving around. Shot clock at five. Powell at three. She'll pull the trigger. Didn't hit the rim. Vanderbilt with the ball looking for their first lead since the first quarter. Moore into Washington. Puckets on her. Jackson comes from the backside, knocks the ball away, and it's picked up by Powell. Tennessee can get the last shot if they choose. Jackson will drive. She'll pull the trigger, gets it. And now Vanderbilt can have the final shot. Well, they're going to take their time and find that final shot. The crowd is up. Ayanna Moore probing. Reverse layup by Oliver to win the half. Wow. Some of the numbers from the game so far. It'll be Tennessee's ball to begin the third quarter. Again, both these teams 4-1 and one in the SEC. The winner stays in second place. LSU also 4-1. and one. South Carolina undefeated. South Carolina the only undefeated team in the nation right now. Uh, one of the things for Tennessee, normally they are down in the second, coming into the third quarter. And Tennessee has come from double digits down in all four of their wins. They have not been double digits down today. They've led most of this game. Passat, and just like she opened the game, knocks down a three-pointer to open the second half. And confidence. That ball seemed like it was in the air for a long time. Tamara Key trying to post up down low. And she's going to get called for a three-second call. Vanderbilt with the lead for the first time since the 827 mark in the first quarter. Moore trying to add to it, doesn't. And Jules Spear with a rebound, uncontested. Spear. Powell lost it, but doesn't turn it over. He's got to get rid of it, though. Well, they're trying to find a way to get the ball to Tamari Key. And That'll good, work. Good look right there. Doesn't put the ball on the floor. Goes straight up. If you're Vanderbilt, how do you even try to stop that? Well, I think you got to push her out of the paint. You can't let her get that low and a post up. Good give and go. Cambridge dribbling in amongst key in the post. Oliver Jackson collapses on her. Watch the movement, Vanderbilt offense. When the ball goes, that's something that Coach Ralph had talked about, that we got to keep moving and make make teams defend us in so many different ways. Akia Jackson, nice drive. Vanderbilt's only won here once in history. That was 2019. Moore saves it right back to Powell. Rifling the pass up to Puckett was Powell in the layup. Vanderbilt comes in with a net rating of 50 in the country. Tennessee has moved up to 56. Tennessee has been steadily climbing. Passat, second three of the... Entry to Key, and Key finishes. Passat again. And Spear with another rebound. I like seeing Passat take those shots, though. Foul is on Cambridge, and Jill Spear at the free throw line now knocks down the free throw from Tennessee. Hollingshed, <laughs> Jackson, Puckett, Powell, and Spear on the floor for Tennessee. A different looking lineup right now. Yeah, and look at this Vanderbilt offense. I mean, they just keep moving and moving and moving. Moore is going to take a shot. Whoa! Oh, Down low. Jackson. And a rebound by Passat. It's, it's one of those years, Tamika, when you show up in the SEC, you don't know who's going to win. Well, and you don't, and I think that's what makes it so fun to watch. Great drive. I Tennessee offense looks a little stagnant. Everybody around the paint. Tia Jackson trying to take it in. 
Yeah. And Jackson. They will keep you playing along outside of, around the three-point arc. Fans trying to become a factor now on this icy day in Knoxville. The drive to the bucket. Moore. Good defense by Powell. Jackson picks it up. Jackson straight through, uses the left, and the ball will... Jackson for three. Off the mark. Offensive rebound by Puckett. And a jump. That's a good call. It is a good call. Camille Pierre got her hands on it. Three on the way. Good. Another three. Jackson trying to take Pierre. Spins. Misses the shot. Offensive rebound by Striplin. Shot clock reset. Under a minute to play in the quarter. Striplin trying to post up. Does. Scores. A two-point Tennessee lead in the closing seconds of the third quarter. Pierre taking Striplin. Misses the shot. Had a four-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock for Tennessee on this possession. Tennessee up to closing seconds of the third quarter. Powell pulls the trigger. Rebound goes out of bounds. It'll stay. Stripling got open the last time, but the pass was off the mark on this inbounds play. They lob it up to Jackson. Jackson muscles it up, draws the foul. While that discussion goes on, Rakia Jackson calmly. In fact, both these teams are two of the better free throw shooting teams in the country. So Vanderbilt with 6.9 seconds left. Have the ball into the third quarter here. Moore racing down the floor. Launches it. Doesn't get the roll. Puckett got the rebound. And so we will head into the final quarter. Side not in the lineup to start the fourth quarter. I'm sure we'll see her, though. Win with the ball for Tennessee. And shot off the mark by Striplin. And a foul on the rebound. Called on Tess Darby. Both teams understanding the importance of every single possession matters. Going out to the loose ball, those 50-50 balls become really extremely important, not only the whole game, but especially when you get to the fourth. Again, Cambridge shooting the three. Knocks it down from the corner. And that trend continues to start the fourth. The Commodore's down by a point. They can't leave three-point shooters wide open. Cambridge shooting 34% from the three. Vanderbilt has only won one time here in Knoxville. And Darby buries the three from the opposite side of the floor. Darby, one of the best all-time in three-point shooting here at Tennessee. She is eighth on the career three-point list. And that is an area that Coach talked about, Coach Harper talked about earlier today, is trying to get her going, figuring out a way to get her some easier look. Win spinning away from Moore. Nobody there to get the pass. Well, two players right there, but neither one of them looking for the ball. Stripling and Puckett trying to run a play. So Spear comes back into the game, replacing Win. 14th turnover of the game on the Lady Vols. I think every single possession having that same intensity and in how you go at it. When you're relentless to something, you won't be denied. Shot clock a factor here. Down to two. Makura leans in, got the rim. And a foul called against Vanderbilt. She's already talking about the NCAA tournament. I love how she speaks that into her team. And Striplin can't catch that entry pass. Turnover to Vanderbilt. Yeah, that was a straight pass in. Striplin not able to get it. Shea, of course, one of the greats at UConn all time. You battled with her. Can you see some of the way she played and the way she coaches? Oh, I see it in her players. I mean, that intensity. When you talk about that relentless, the relentless pursuit in every single possession, that is the epitome of Shea Ralph and how she played every single possession that she was on the court. Even when you watched her and she was on the bench, you still saw that fire that she had, that she possessed and how she built with the pieces that she has. You said it earlier, she feels like she has more weapons this year than she's had in the past, but every year you're starting to see that. Tamari Key into the game right now. Stripling goes to the bench with two fouls. Moore 
had a break in the defense and nailed it. All of a sudden, there was a clearing in the lane. <laughs> Powell forcing her way to the basket and draws the foul. Moore said, okay, I'll go in, thank you. And Moore has just committed her third foul to put Jasmine Powell on the free throw line. Powell knocks that down. Powell in grad school here at Tennessee, already has a degree in journalism and electronic media. Tennessee team put up a 3-3-7 fall GPA last year. Cambridge, three on the way, in and out. Powell with the rebound and will race up the floor. Yeah, I like that cut right there. Oh. Powell. Jasmine Powell, little showtime. Timeout Vanderbilt. And the player, she, she actually played with Billy Moore. Billy Moore was on that yeah. team. Uh, a lot of the other great were on that team, so having that opportunity is a big deal. And that cuts the lead to four. Tennessee had been on a 7-2 to two run that lasted over three minutes. And that takes a little wind out of the sail here of this crowd. They have become quite a factor. Well, you knew Vandy was going to come back at some yeah. point and, and hit a couple of shots and try to figure it out, trying to find a way to get the ball to key, and that will go. Right on, drag down Pierre, not allowing her to jump. Second foul on Spear. Let's see how both teams respond to that. Pierre trying to get past Puckett. Passat in the game now with the ball. They're trying to attack, find the open players. And you said it earlier, you like the way that Bandy plays. They're constantly moving and they finish at the basket. Don't count Vanderbilt out, ever. Two-point lead for Tennessee. The winner stays in second place in the SEC. Tamari Key. Get the roll offense from Tennessee. Gets it in. Anytime Tamari Key gets her right around the basket where she doesn't have to dribble and go straight up, that's a great shot for Lady Balls. Tamari Key, five of five. Every time she's shot, she scored. Cambridge misses the three. Darby with the rebound. Clears it to Spear. That's Powell. Powell driving in. I was on Washington. She stays in the game. Makara in the game once again for Vanderbilt. Eight assists for Powell. Look at this offense right here. Vanderbilt continues to move. Players move and move and move. I think sometimes they don't, they probably don't even know where they're moving, but as long as they're moving, it's part of the offense. Hard to guard. Six point lead for Tennessee. Cambridge trying to get some space. Oh my goodness. How Amari Key's reaction on that, but Cambridge, great job of turning the corner. Washington picks it off. Only Powell to beat. Hands it off. And the bank is. Crucial turnovers at the wrong time. Amari Key trying to post up. Oh. Another turnover. Cambridge with the steal. Got her hands on that pass and kept it. Watch out, here come the Commodore. Four minutes left, that's the last media timeout. And for both of these teams coming in, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. For most teams, you practice the four-minute segment. Three on the way. Good by Joel Spear. And the lead is three as a result. Vanderbilt left her wide open, almost daring her to take the shot. Washington hands it to Oliver. Cambridge can't save it. And uh, Cambridge is trying to say a lady ball touched it, but not getting the call. Talk uh, about it. Yeah, if it touched one of the Lady Balls, yeah. So they're going to give the ball back to Vanderbilt. But you're right, shot clock is six. They got to score in a hurry, get the shot off at least. Cambridge, one on the shot clock. Boy, is she money or what? Oh, yeah, and Sasha Washington set that screen, gives Cambridge just enough space to get that shot up. By the way, Rakia Jackson's been out of the game for quite a while. Not sure why. Key. And a foul on Tamari Key, offensive foul. 
That's her third. Vanderbilt looking to retake the lead here in Knoxville. Vanderbilt has won one time in history in this building. That was in 2019. Passat getting around the screen. Fire short. Cambridge picks it up. And a whistle on the rebound. Fouls on Passat. And that is her second. There's no shortage of intensity right now. The in-state rivalry, Tennessee trying to protect home court. So many things on the table. Both teams trying to stay at that number two spot in the SEC. A lot of things that play today. Spear had it blocked. Bodies on the floor. Jump ball. Possession arrow gives it back to Vanderbilt. And again, uh, Rakia Jackson not on the Tennessee bench at the moment. Moore. Washington clearing out, going up against Key. Tries to go under and travels. This year, trying to get it, end up traveling a little bit. See that foot move. Two minutes to play. Tennessee up one. Jasmine Powell. When she takes the ball in with that aggressiveness, she is hard to guard. Ayanna Moore trying to stay in front of her. And Powell missed the last one, the last opportunity for the and one. You saw her get upset with herself, but this one was determined to get to the free throw line. Double trouble for Vanderbilt. That was Moore's fourth foul and also puts Tennessee in the bonus the rest of the way. Fans trying to become a six man. Back door to Cambridge. She forces the pass, intercepted. Ninety seconds in regulation. Tennessee up four. Tennessee trying to figure out a way to take care of the ball. Here, probing, pulls it back out. Cambridge is on her close. Behind the back. And a foul on Cambridge. Cambridge third on Vanderbilt's all-time steals list. Jules Spear trying to pad the lead. Does three of three. This will be her fourth. That's where the good free throw shooting really comes in handy. It's a six-point lead for Tennessee. Vanderbilt trying to get a quick score. They've done a great job of running their offenses. Sasha Washington with the great screen. Cambridge, the runner off the mark. Washington's offensive rebound and shot is off. Powell pushes it. Double team. And a timeout taken by Tennessee. Tried to get it into Puckett and she's fouled from behind by Pierre. Try to take some time off the clock and give yourself opportunities to score. That is only the fifth free throw all season Sarah Puckett has missed. Knocks down the second one. They got their three shooters out there from Sasha Washington down low. Set a screen. You don't have much time to run a full-fledged offense. You got to get a good look and get one fast. Cambridge dribbled out of bounds. Tennessee will get the ball back. Powell takes the pass. And everyone swarming Joel Spear. I tell you what, she is going to be one of the stars in the SEC. Joel Spear on the free throw line continues to add to this Tennessee lead. Spear now five of five from the free throw line. Tennessee is a team. 17 of 18 from the free throw line today. That has been a big difference. Trying to find a quick score. Cambridge launches short. Picked up by Makara. Spear will push it. Under 30 seconds to play. You gotta find the open players. Vanderbilt is good at being able to get you in those corners. Jump ball. 
but it is looking like Tennessee is going to be able to hang on here and stay in second place in the SEC, beating off quite a challenge from Vanderbilt. And that'll do it. The fans rise to their feet. Tennessee wins at home against Vanderbilt. There's actually eight-tenths of a second on the clock as that ball just squirted out of bounds. But it is Tennessee. Uh, th this was a gut check win for Lady Balls. Definitely a gut check win against a very good Vanderbilt Commodore team.